Hey guys, welcome back to the Past Money Plan. I'm Alex, that's Kirby. Today's topic is going to be this right here. Um, the millennial net worth by demographic according to the Federal Reserve. And as you can see, number one, Asian, they're holding the top. We got white, multi-race, Hispanic, black. And it just gives you an idea of by race, what their net worth is for the majority of that crowd. Um, now, millennials, just to clarify, millennials are people that are, I believe it's 1997 to like, or 1981 to 97. I'll put it up here. Yeah, it's yeah, 97. Right. Yeah, because I know because I am I was born in 1998, and I think that begins Gen Z. Um, right. So, yeah, so this, this goes to you, Kirby. This fits you. <laughs> I'm Gen Z. I don't think we even made it to this list yet, <laughs> but. Yeah, they they ain't got no they ain't got no <laughs> details on y'all yet. <laughs> We're still being studied. All right, but um, but now this is interesting to see, and I don't know. I, me being, I think I would fit number three and four because I'm mixed, and you know I'm Hispanic, I'm multi race, white, whatever. I grew up more Hispanic. That's why I say I fit more number four because I grew up more Hispanic than I did Caucasian or American. Um, but I am a half breed. So, but I, I think this fits in the, for, for me in the culture, I don't think it's for me, I wouldn't say like, Oh yeah, Hispanics are poor because they're Hispanics. I just know growing up looking at the culture and seeing how my family was and how family friends were like, Oh, you just got a new job. Like, oh, are you gonna buy a Mercedes? Like, I just saw that so much. Like, and they just the way they are with money because it's a culture thing. Like, you know, your family comes from generations of working in just plantations, you know, like sugar plantations and stuff like that. You come from Puerto Rico, you come here, your first envision is oh, let's go up north to New York because that's America. And then you go up to New York, you're poor because you can't figure out the game, and then you move to another state. And then you work in a factory like, you know, so like whenever someone goes to college in a Hispanic family, a first, second generation Hispanic family, that's like that's huge news because, oh, our family never did that back in the homeland. Like, so that was like the biggest focus for my family was like, go to college, get a good job. But then if you skip the college route and you get a good job, you got to treat yourself and you got to buy a nice house and a buy, you know, buy all this stuff. But no one understood money. They just thought, like, do what you can to earn a, a high wage. And that was it. They thought that the rich people were just greedy, selfish, and they were evil, <laughs> you know, because right. most Hispanics also are Catholic. And they seem to believe that they, they misinterpret the Bible where it says the uh, the love of money is the root of all evil, where they think it's actually money is the root of all evil, which it's not. Right. Uh, yeah, I mean that's a great, uh, a great um, in-depth perspective of the Hispanic culture. Like you said, you grew up more Hispanic, so everybody on here that thought Alex was white, he do got some Puerto Rican in him. He speaks Spanish and all that other stuff. I was with him at the beach a couple of weeks ago. He looked miserable, but he was speaking Spanish. So <laughs> I can attest to it. <laughs> but um. Yeah, look at these numbers. I mean, it's sad, but I I understand that. And like you said, it's cultural differences. I mean, like you said, with the Hispanic race, and I'm not going to speak for the Hispanic race, uh, you know, they moved to New York, especially coming from places, Puerto Rico, the islands, things like that. They think that the America is New York because, you know, most of the TV shows they probably watched was in New York, so they figured that's where they need to be. Um, I don't think it's pretty much a figure in the game out of New York. It's just the simple fact that New York, they tax the hell out of you and it costs a lot to live there. And so, especially coming from, uh, coming from, you know, an area, you know, like the islands and, you know, Hispanic, um, homelands, you know, they're used to working outside all the time, you know, working with their hands. New York, you work with your hands, but it's cold as hell in the summer. I mean, in the winter, you know, you don't have the, you know, the hot and things like that. But then 
to compound the fact of, yeah, they'll make more, probably make more money nominal wise than they made where they came from. But the cost to live there, the tax burdens that they have to take on to live there is astronomical. Um, for me on this um, list here, I see that Blacks are at 9.8 thousand network. Um, it's disheartening. It's disheartening um, because, I mean, like, you know, this channel is all about, you know, what should you do with money and what you should do with money is paramount to where it's at. But as you stated, it's basically basically cultural differences. I mean, like the Asians, I, I know a business owner that's Asian um, when he owns a nail shop. He owns a nail shop and you don't hear them talking about, oh, when your kid turns 18, you kick him out of the house. You don't hear uh, about, hey, I got to go hurry up and buy me a Lamborghini. I can't wait till I show everybody my network, blow the bag. Um, they believe in community financing. They believe in education on the financial side, but also on the you know institutional side. So they believe, I mean, when I talk about community uh, finance, or they believe in pooling money together to make stuff happen. So again, for his business, you know, he got family members, cousins, everybody. They probably all came from uh, China or wherever. And it wasn't, hey, everybody, now y'all got a job. Now everybody go move to your own separate place. It was, hey, how about we get this business? Everybody pool their money and then we get one place. I mean, yeah, it's going to suck. It's going to suck, you know, for a couple of years, but we're going to keep working to pool our money together to get another one, get another one, get another one, get another one. And then now everybody get to branch out and spread out like that. And then that's how they keep the finances inside their circular uh, group. Uh, and I'm speaking for the black households. That's the only thing they talk about is kids, parents, 18, you got to get out the house. Oh, you grown now. You got to go. And they send them out to a world that the kids, the parents, let alone the kids know anything about, especially on the financial side of it. And I mean, I could speak to my own, my own self. Me, as growing up as a kid, I saw how much money my mom had to pay in bills and rent and mortgages and things like that. I always said I wanted no part of that life. You know, every all the other kids was like, hey, man. Yeah, you're about to be 18. I graduated high school when I was 17. You're about to be 18, you can move out. I was like, hell no, I don't want no part of that. Because I understood, you know, you're doing all this work just to pay, just to work, just to pay, just to work, just to pay. But for the most part, everybody was couldn't wait to get 18. So, oh, I don't have to live by my mom's rules no more. I was like, forget that. I'll take the rules. I don't want the, I don't want the bills. Um, and then that's what happens. So you throw you throw them out there in the deep end of the ocean with no life reserver, expecting them to know what's going on. And this is the byproduct of it. Um, less than ten thousand dollars net worth. And over my time, I I've, I've been on every end of the spectrum on this list. Uh, you know, I you know left the house when I was nineteen, uh, and I this is stereotypical. Uh, Kid, youth in America, get the money, blow it, got signing bonuses from the military, blew that, uh, bought a house during the uh, during the housing boom in 07, no money down, didn't understand how interest rates and mortgages worked. I thought, oh, I'll buy a house, I'll get the same payment for the rest of my life. I didn't know how property taxes, insurance, and all that other stuff affected the mortgage rate. Uh, I didn't understand really how the job market worked because I was in the military. And then next thing you know, I go from zero network living from my mom to about $300 in the military. I get out of the military and then I'm sitting there at a negative 75,000 net worth, you know, because I threw on credit card debt on top of that, you know, and all store card debt, you know, uh, underwater, you know, cars and things like that. Uh, buy one car, you know, turn it in, get another car, turn it in, get another car. So underwater on car cars. So then, you know, fast forward through time, I, you know, I hit the ten thousand dollar network, but it was all about educating myself on how this game worked and how the game worked. 
and what I was told growing up is two totally different things. And then so to but so to still see this, you know, me, you know, being 20 years past, you know, that I went from the time I left the house to now to see that nobody still learned anything, especially in my culture. It's very disheartening, sad. It's, uh, it's the reason why we started the channel. So to eliminate excuses so people can't say they don't know. The only thing they could do is say they don't want to put the time and energy to consume the concept because we're giving everything out to them for free. So that's that's how I feel about it. Another point I would make on like um, the Hispanic culture is it's very much like revered as a man. You need to work with your hands and be a manual laborer. Um, you know, I, I grew up in a family that was more blue collar, uh, like construction, mechanic work, stuff like that. Um, I know you got corporate Hispanics and all that, but it's, you know, in say in my family setting, it was like, oh, if you don't work with your hands, like, who are you as a man? Which I, I think it's important to know, like, at least around the house things and how to work on your own vehicle and stuff like that. Uh, just in case you come in a clutch, you don't want to be on the side of the road and not know how to change a tire. Um, but they have this lifestyle where that's all they do. They work, work, work with their hands and construction, mechanic work up until they're in their 60s. And they can never learn how to, or they never try to learn how to use their brain more and put other people to work and make money right. that way. So they're always the working class citizen and they're never the one that's in charge. And, you know, I, I always looked at it as a point where I didn't want to work for somebody or be doing the physical work throughout my whole life. I wanted to be someone that controlled everything below. And I, you know, was at the top or being successful in that in that scenario. Um, so I think that's it's I just I that's why I really just think it's culture. Um I can just see how the Hispanic culture is. And um, it's, I would also say they're not really familiar with uh, the stock market or anything like that. There's some that might understand real estate, but the stock market is, I think it's big in the United States and in Europe. It's not really big in the Latin countries or nothing like that. So they don't, they don't understand that aspect either. Right. And, and it's, they have the opportunity to understand it. They don't want to understand exactly. it. I mean, exactly. just think just think of it. The same people, the same people that's at the bottom rung of this list here, they don't want to learn about the stock market. They don't want to learn about investing. They don't want to save their money, but they they know what instant gratification is. They know uh if I put $20 on a Powerball, if I magically hit it, you know, once I got a one chance out of a 200 billion chance of hitting it money will be made. So they're going to spend their life savings on that. But they are putting their time, effort, and energy to pick the right Powerball numbers, to pick the right lottery numbers, to gamble, to think that they will, once they get the money, they will know what to do with it. And I always say, say this, and people get mad when I say it. If you don't know what to do with a $30,000 a year salary, then you won't know what to do with a million dollar salary billion dollar salary people get this idea oh once i make the money then i will invest then i will learn about money the the thing is is if you don't learn about money when you don't have none what do you think the likelihoods of once you get some somebody's gonna be able to tell you something about money literally zero that's when everybody just gonna have their guy and we can see it in society today uh just look at pro athletes pro athletes they go from zero dollars, you know, being in it. I mean, now they got the NIA, NIL deals, but historically making no money playing sports all the way until they get to the professional game. They get to the professional game and then they get, you know, these big contracts and then they have money. And then for the most part, over 50% of them, after they're done playing, they have to file bankruptcy because they lost all the money. So they didn't study money beforehand. And then you think somebody's going to tell them what to do with money after the fact? No. Hell no. And that's what everybody thinks. Oh, once I get some money, then I'll, I will learn about it. No, you have those guys. And then once, you know, I mean, you know, you know, everybody say, oh, I got this guy to do this. I got this guy to do that. 
And then, and then I mean, you hear the horror stories in professional sports all the time, how the brother, cousin, CPAs, managers stole all their money. It's because you don't know anything about money. So you're not going to, you're not going to get more financially literate for the, uh, based off the money you get. You're going to spend less time learning about finances, the more money you get. So the time to learn about finances is when you don't have none, understand how the game work, and then take then start practicing those exercises on the job that you have now. You start practicing those exercises now, and then as it slowly grows, slowly grows, and the more money you make, then you will have a better understanding and know how to execute it once it comes. Like I said, I've been on every spectrum of this list. You know, I've been lower than this list, you know, um, and but then, of course, I've exceeded the top of this list on as far as salaries and net worth. But the, the key of it was the key switch for me was learning about money when I didn't have it. And then I just kept executing, kept executing, kept executing. And then the more money I have, um, I mean, I've told the story many times. I never thought I'd see five thousand dollars in a bank account. But now that I see hundreds of thousands of dollars, millions in a bank account, I don't sit there and be like, oh, oh. Now I can go ball out. I'm so used to making money work for me and telling money what to do. It don't matter what the number is. I mean, I remember when I um, when I first moved to Florida, it was just a hundred thousand dollars just sitting in my bank account, and it just sat there. It just sat there. Now, if this was me, you know, twenty years ago, I would have had every shoe, <laughs> every you know, I'd have had everything, you know. But now it's just it's just normal to see it. It's not. A number that I'm just like, oh my gosh, you know? So that's, it's just the real concept of understanding money and making money work for you. Um, you tell money what to do before money tells you what to do. And based off this list, the people that in the bottom rung, because like you said, this is my demographic, this is my age group. If you're, if you're my age and you're in the network wise, if you're anything past number one, then it's a crying shame because, and I'm not saying it based off of what I have. I'm basing, I'm basing it off of just simple math. Let's just say these people did the bare minimum of for the past 20 years. Let's just use that for the past 20 years. They just put $6,000 a year, $6,000 a year in a Roth IRA. So 6,000 times 20, that's 120,000. That's just, that's with no appreciation or nothing. So just six thousand dollars a year and a Roth IRA. That's one hundred and twenty thousand. That puts you between number two and number three right there. Now you add on that eight percent or the historical average of the S and P five hundred. So um, I got to pull up a compound interest calculator. So let's just do this and then initial investment six thousand monthly. Contribution is 500, uh, length of years, 20 years, estimated interest rate. Let's let's just bring it to 8%. We know the historical average of S&P 500 is 10, but let's just do 8%. Uh, compound frequency annually. So just $6,000 $6, a year over a 20-year period, and this is the age dynamic that I'm in, that puts you at $302,000. Just with that. Now you add in, you know, equity from a house or what have you, you're you're over the number one position. So that's why I believe anybody that's not in the one position, especially being in my age dynamic of a millennial, they was lazy, they was arrogant, and they just didn't know. This not no grant card on if you make four hundred thousand dollars a year, you're broke. No. This is the simple bare bones minimum. If you did this, you should be higher. You should be higher on this list. And the thing is, is at the bare minimum, if you saved, you made 120. If you invested, you at 302. So it's no excuse. There's no excuse. Yeah. This I, list is is insane to me. I mean, I, it's correct, but it's totally insane. Yeah, I agree with those statements, too, because in I know you always tell me I'm a unicorn, uh, but in, in case people don't understand, Kirby always says I'm not like the rest of the crowd. But um, I, I agree with those statements because that's all it took me was 
thinking, okay, before I start making money, before I do something stupid, like put myself in a, you know, six figures worth of student loan debt, let me try and understand how money works and how I can get to the point where people, it just took me understanding or questioning information received, like we always talk about. And like you said, that's all it takes. 6000 a year invested in a Roth IRA and then having some equity on a home. That's not even much of an accomplishment, but that's in doing the bare minimum still puts you above in the top, you know, 1% or 10% of that crowd. And that's literally all it takes. So people that can't even do that are just not even thinking for themselves or trying. And that's why it it's difficult for me to even like care for people even say like even people close to me that are in those positions because it's like you saw what i did you could have at least asked me a couple questions but or it, it it i don't see how it's that difficult to just ask the basic question of what can i do different than the rest of the crowd because i don't want to be like that and you know and people they just they go their whole lives just doing what they're told and not paying attention and being lazy like you said and it's just yeah. And and the one thing we say as we wrap it up is they don't want nobody don't want to go against the crowd. They want to be with the crowd. Um everybody it seems like if everybody's poor and broke together, then everybody's happy. That's what it seems like. Of course, they hide the skeletons in the closet. But then soon somebody wanna break off and do something different. They're mad at the person that wanna improve themselves instead of, oh, why don't you just be happy and broke with us down here? Why? And and that's and that was something that I had to get over because, you know, I always thought that oh, I wanted to be around my family, you know, family and friends, the same people I grew up with. You know how that song goes: started from the bottom, now we're here. You know, I thought that if I started to elevate myself, I could bring people along with me. But it's a lonely road. It's a lonely road. People don't want to follow because people still want to be part of the crowd. They can't break that peer pressure, that stigma of oh, I'm not part of the crowd. That's why you see people. You know, they follow a crowd of social media. They get a couple dollars and then they got to go show off what piece of jewelry they buy or what shoes they they have. <clears throat> but next thing you know, you look up, they ain't posting about those red notices from the utility bill that's coming through there and they about to shut off the power. <laughs> right, so, so, yeah. But all that being said, please uh, like, subscribe, you know, send us the hate comments. You know, tell me how you feel about whatever demographic you fall in if you're a millennial uh what you know demographic and where you sit at and uh just give me your insight and your thoughts and we'll see you in the next video we'll see you guys